Hi, this is Andy and Sharon McClellan from Father's House. Welcome to this teaching session. We pray that you will be blessed and grow as a result of listening today. That's a good sound. That's an awesome sound. I'm going to bring it in later. I'm going to preach on that next week. <laughs> good one. Hey, we're listening. It's great to have you all with us this morning. And remember that we're live now on Facebook. So if you want to take your actual phones and share it with your friends, invite them to come in this morning and hear what it is. Uh, the, the Spirit of the Lord wants to say this morning to you and to all your friends. And so here at Father's House, we're just delighted that you've come and joined with us. You that have come in from the nations uh, to be here, may you be blessed. May you be stoked and rocked today by the Holy Spirit as we just talk about him today and share about Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, and the power that lies within us. Amen. So great to have you with us. And so we're going to uh, talk today uh, about Holy Ghost and about what it means to actually be blessed by that gift of the Lord, by the gift of the Holy Spirit dwelling inside you and me. And we're going to look at why it's inside of us, the power that it gives us, and what a blessing that we have that we most of us don't even realize the extent of this power that lies within us. So hopefully after today, my heart would be that you get to know this Holy Spirit. It's a person. It's a person of the Spirit of God. And so it's alive. He speaks. And because he speaks, that tells me he's open to us talking back. So there should be this two-way communication. So we want to honor the, the Lord God Almighty this morning. We want to honor the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. And we want to honor the Holy Spirit, the one that we have been given by the Lord Jesus Christ to remain inside us and dwell with us. Amen. So let's have a look at this. Uh, first of all, I want to go back and I want to look at the Hebrew word, uh, you know, that it would be for Holy Ghost. Now, Kadosh is that Hebrew word that speaks about holy. And Kadosh, actually, when you bring it into the English language, means set apart for either a function or a purpose. So it's something that's specific. Kadosh is holy, set apart. It is not to be tainted, not to be dirtied. It is of the Lord and is for the service of the Lord and the purposes of the Lord God Almighty. Amen. You know, so bear that in mind as we as we go through this this morning. In Romans 11, it says that, that we are grafted into the vine. And verse 8, God gave them the spirit of stupor, eyes to see not, ears to hear not, down to this very day. Okay, so that's, you're going to, you're going to, well, we'll unravel it as we go through. But basically, I want you to bear that in mind, that God has blinded the ears, blinded the eyes, uh, blinded, blinded, the, blinded the eyes, blocked up the ears, uh, even to this day, but, but God. We'll look at that in a few minutes. You know, in Romans 11, it says there, verse 16, if the first piece of dough is holy, then the lump is also. And if the root is holy, the branches are too. Now that's talking about the vine. Verse 17, but if some of the branches were broken off and you, being a wild olive, were grafted in among them and became a partaker with them of the rich root of the olive tree. Verse 18, do not be arrogant toward the branches, but if you are arrogant, Remember that this is not you who support that it is not you who supports the root, but the root supports you. So you got to get your focus right and your and your reality right, uh, and don't become arrogant and prideful. Keep yourself based and rooted uh, the, to the very source where the power of God comes from. And don't think you're bigger than God because He will remove His hand from you. But when His hand is on you. Wow, watch out what comes next, because God is here to bless and fulfill his word in every scenario. Now, in Leviticus 10.10, 10, we distinct, distinguish between the holy and the common and the profane. You know, it says there, and so as to make a distinction between the holy and the profane, and between the unclean and the clean. So there is a clear distinction between 
what is holy set aside for the purposes and the, the plans of God and the use of God and to what is profane. Profane is everything that's out there that that hates God, does not want our God, you know, it absolutely stands against our God, but they don't realize that this God is a God of love that loves them and wants to show them a better way, wants them to be found where they are, and that is the job of the Holy Spirit who seeks them out and convicts of sin and brings them into relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? You know, Kadosh is the set-apart examples what was set apart uh, in the Bible times was the articles of the temple. So everything that was within the temple was set aside for a purpose and a duty to be used within the temple where the presence of the Lord dwelt. The spirit of Yahweh is also, it's set apart. It's that spirit of God, the spirit of Yahweh. It's set apart. It cannot be touched. You know, and then we've got the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is the holy day. It's a day of the week set aside for us to seek God's face intentionally. Then you've got the Torah, which was the five books of the law set aside for the Israelis to actually live by. It was like the book of the law, and they were to, uh, to, to live under that and to manage that. Then, of course, for us, there's the Holy Bible. The Word of God, the living and active and all-powerful Word of the Lord God Almighty that we are blessed with to have as what would be called Gentiles today. We're blessed to have the Word of the Lord in our hands. Amen? So, set apart for holiness. That's what it's all about. And in 1 Peter 1 and verse 13, Therefore, prepare your minds for action, keep sober in spirit, Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lusts, the old things, which were yours in your ignorance, but you're no longer ignorant, are you? I'm not ignorant. I know you're not ignorant. And then verse 15, but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in your all of your behavior, because it's written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And that relates back to Le Leviticus in the law, the books of the law, the Torah. Uh, chapter 11, verse 44, for I am the Lord your God, consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am holy. And you shall not make yourselves unclean with any of the swarming things that swarm on the earth, for I am the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God, thus you shall be holy, for I am holy. Amen? So that's God just reminding that where he brought the children of Israel from, and because of his hand upon their lives, he was requiring of them to be holy as he is holy, to walk in righteous ways like he set up for them to, to, to be. So that's Holy Ghost really is it's a term that's sometimes not used too much today. It's more relevant to be saying Holy Spirit, but a Holy Ghost is nonetheless the same as Holy Spirit. For I am the Lord who brought you up from the land of Israel. And when he, what he's meaning by that is the word ghost means in Hebrew, it has two meanings. Uh, one is gava, which is something like we would understand as a spirit or a ghost or, you know, something from the dark side, uh, you know, a, a demonic presence. And, and so it has that, that uh, connotation of what a, a ghost is, uh, in, you know, like the spirits that uh, float around the world and do things. But the actual biblical and what we understand is nefesh, which is relating to life and the breath, the soul and the wind. Now, this word is used 475 times in the Old Testament, and it's, it refers to the essence of life and the act of breathing. Living and breathing are connected. And so uh, the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, connects with us through our breathing and through the Word of God. And the Word is what is spoken, but for you to speak, you require breath. So there is an interaction between the breath and the word that comes out of your mouth. And so that's just such a powerful thing. Sharon just read there about Psalm 103. And in that uh, uh, Psalm, bless the Lord, O my soul. 
your soul, your spirit. Bless the Lord, O my spirit, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Psalm 103, verse 1. And so that was good. Sharon read that before we started this morning. What is the meaning of the Hebrew word ruach for spirit? Ruach is the Hebrew word for the spirit of the living God. Amen. And uh, it's when speaking, the word comes out of you and engages one's breath and lungs. So that's a, it's a combination, breath and lung, creating word. And so in Genesis 1 and verse 2, you see the first uh, talked about Ruach, that releasing of the word. And that's the, when it was, and the earth was a formless and desolate emptiness, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit, Ruach of God, was hovering over the surface of the waters. Amen. You know, so there's the very first instance where the word ruach and that breath, that spirit of God hovering over, waiting for the instruction to speak the word, to release words that created creation. <laughs> so powerful. Uh, ruach HaKodesh uh, and Ruach Elohim are two other forms of that. Now, Ruach HaKodesh uh, is, you know, is what appears in the Old Testament. It's the Hebrew word for the Holy Spirit. So Ruach HaKodesh is that word for Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the power of the living God. And in Psalm 51 and verse 11, and David prayed, do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your, your Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, from me. That is the terminology that David was praying in. He wasn't just having a nice prayer. He was crying out to God, do not remove your Holy Spirit. Do not remove your real Hakadesh from me because I'll miss it so much. And if you miss it, you've lost some. You need to get back in touch with it again. And so Ruach Elohim is slightly different because that is the Spirit of God. It's the breath of God. And it's used in the Old Testament to refer to when uh, the Lord God Almighty and the Spirit of God came upon individuals to carry out purposes and plans for God that he would have them and use them uh, to create his word to be released in nations. Genesis 41 and verse 38, Pharaoh, uh, who is the ruler of the Egyptians, even said in that scripture, can we find a man like this in whom is the Ruach Elohim, the Spirit of God? So Ruach Elohim is the Lord, uh, you know, signs in the temple that where God came and visited, and uh, Bezalel uh, was one who was filled by the Spirit of God. Why? Because God wanted him to have the ability and the craftsmanship, the ingen ingenuity, and the skill to create all of the structures and the designs that the Lord wanted to have within his holy temple. Amen? And so you can read about that in Exodus 31. And so the Spirit of the Lord uh, even came upon Balaam. You know, we all know about uh, Balaam's ass stopping him in the, in the road and, and wouldn't let him pass. But, but the Spirit of the Lord came upon Balaam when he attempted to curse the people of Israel, and instead he ended up blessing them. So his intent was a curse, but when the Spirit of the living God came upon him, it changed his outlook, changed his, his persona, and out of that he blessed rather than cursed. And that's in Numbers 24 too. I'm moving through this quickly because I want to get to I want to get to the meat of the end of this. And so I want to bless you guys today with really what is going on here. Uh, the, so the Elohim, uh, the Ruach Elohim, and the Holy Spirit are one and the same. The Old Testament speaks about it, and it comes to quicken, it comes to fill, it comes upon us uh, and comforts us and which is also what we know of the Holy Spirit does in the New Testament. So there is so much in this today that is truth, that is biblical, and should stir your spirit up to get to know this Holy Ghost, this Holy Spirit that we've been blessed with. Ezekiel 37, we all know that famous scripture about, you know, the, the Valley of Dry Bones, they're dead, they're, you know, completely bone dry, as you could say, and yet God commands and the breath comes in, and they come back to life again. And that's a picture of Israel coming back in as a nation in 1948, prophetic utterance calling for belief in the God, the Ruach Elohim. Amen. So the work of the Holy Spirit is an undeniable 
uh, work uh, of Ruach in Hebrew uh, when the person comes to faith in Jesus, the Messiah. The example of that is Saul, who had that uh, encounter on the road to Damascus, which completely transformed him. Uh, you know the scripture earlier, and that, that we are uh, blinded and we are, we are deaf, and even up to this day. There was an encounter with Saul where he was blinded and deaf, thought he was doing the right thing, uh, was totally convinced he was in the right track, helping God get rid of all these believers in Jesus. And yet he was so far off the track. But one encounter, one instance where the Spirit of God fell upon him, changed the direction of his life. He had a Damascus experience that uh, when Ananias was sent in to pray over him, God took off the scales of his eyes and he could see like he never seen before. Clarity came to Saul who was now going to become Paul, one of the greatest apostles of the early church. You know, and so that's amazing. You can read about that in Acts 9, 17 to 18. I'm not going to take time to read it now. But the word of the Ruach, the Spirit, does two important things. He restores sight by walking up, by waking up the human spirit through confession. The second part he does is the spirit removes the obstacles of being dead in one's trespasses. So Saul got transformed in an instant by what happened and the, the laying on of hands by Ananias completely changed his perspective, completely changed his direction in life. One encounter from the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so that's what we look for today for you guys, that you have this encounter with the Holy Spirit that shifts and changes everything, that any blockages of your eyes get removed and anything that's blocking your ears from hearing the word of the Lord or the voice of the Spirit gets removed today in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Uh, a guy called Sinclair Ferguson once said, does not add information but about Jesus, he simply opens our eyes to see who he really is. Exactly what happened to Saul. He had his eyes open and his life turned around. The Spirit verifies them and makes our hearts respond to the truth they're in. And that's in 2 Timothy 3.16, where the Ruath quickens us to the power of the Scriptures, what lies within the Bible, which is God-breathed. And you know, the verification of that is in 2 Timothy 3 verse 16. So what's the role of the Spirit? You know, and you know, is it intimately entwined with the Word and the Spirit? Of course it is. The two are completely linked, hip to hip. They cannot be separated. You cannot one without the other because you have an imbalance. But when the two are working together and in conjunction, what is coming from the Father through the Word and through the Spirit actually carry weight, carry power, and shift atmospheres. The word of God is, is breathed, breathed at him. Psalm 33, verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath, Ruach, of his mouth, all of their host. Come on. This is the God we serve. In uh, the 19th century preacher, Charles Spurgeon, in, in, in talking about uh, the operation of the Holy Spirit, he writes this. Sometimes when we go and visit people, we mistake, mistake their disease. Uh, we want to comfort them on this point. Whereas, why do you not require any such comfort at all? And they would be better left alone than spoiled by such unwise comforters as we are. And he goes on to write, but oh, how wise the Holy Spirit is. He takes the soul, lays it on the table and dissects it in a moment. He finds out the root of the matter. He sees where the complaint is, and then he applies the knife where something is required to be taken away or puts a plaster where the sore is. He never mistakes. Oh, how wise the blessed Holy Ghost. From, the, from every comforter, I turn and leave them all. Uh, for thou art he who alone givest the wisest consolation. Uh, there's some wisdom there from, from uh, a great 
father of the church, Charles Spurgeon. What are the symbols that we recognize as symbols of the Holy Spirit? Well, the first one would be the dove. And you see the dove uh, when it actually comes down and lands on Jesus' shoulder uh, during the baptism of Jesus. And that's when the heavens opened and the Father spoke. This is my beloved son. So the spirit came, it came upon Jesus, and then the Father, the word was spoken over him. Uh, the next one we can talk about is the fire. What an interesting is that the fire or air, uh, fire needs air to breathe. It needs that to actually ignite and to combust and go for it. And in Acts 2, you get the whole picture of uh, the actual anointing that fell in the upper room at Pentecost, where you had fire that fell in the room, the shaking and the winds of God all happening within the same room, which radically impacted, radically changed those group of believers in Jesus' name. And this, is a, this is an interesting one, and you may not have heard this one before, but if you go to Isaiah 59 and verse 19, the prophet writes there that the Lord arrives and he takes the scripture and he says, this is the scripture. When the enemy shall come in like a flood slash rushing tide, driven by the spirit slash breath of the Lord, raising up a standard against him. Did you get that? The Lord can come in like a rushing tide. That's a description of how the Holy Spirit can come in. And I love that because it's just such an interesting concept. I mean, when you look at a rushing tide, you think of the, the pounding of the rocks, the, the, the waves hitting and breaking over things and actually bashing. Sometimes it's so majestic and so beautiful to stand down there and watch the noise and the sound and the white and the form of the waves just changing everything. And, and in an instant, things can just get overcome by that coming in of the wave, that breath of the Lord, raising up a standard against him, raising up a standard against the enemy. Now, Ruach, the living breath of our, of our being, the same power that spoke creation into being. And in Romans 8, verse 11, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Do you hear that? Through his spirit who dwells where? In you, in me. It is a gift from God that we've been blessed with. Paul is saying here that the spirit who arrives like the unstoppable power of a rushing tide, which resurrected Messiah Jesus from the dead, lives in you today. You know, it's such an amazing, it means that you're facing an obstacle today. God is able to send his spirit to you with the power of a rushing tide. <laughs> man, oh man, when you think of the, of the scripture where Jesus was uh, out walking on the water and the tide that was there was absolutely turmoiling the boat where the disciples were at and they were getting distressed, worried, and thinking, oh, my days, will we make it to the other side? Along comes Jesus Christ, the power source, the greater tide, the greater, stronger tide, the rushing tide that quietens the, the tide and the, and the enemy's attempt to create uh, waves and, and destruction. But there is one who is greater. His name is Jesus Christ, and the Spirit of the living God dwells on him. Jesus turns up walking on that storm to say, I stand upon, I take authority over, and I have all authority over this storm, and it will, it will obey me because I am the Son of the living God. I think a rushing tide. Come on, Holy Spirit. Come like a rushing tide today. <laughs> you know, when you look at the instance in the New Testament of this great story where a woman who'd been suffering for 12 years with this issue of blood, she should not even have been in the town. She should not have been on the street because she was constantly in a place of being unclean. The unclean, according to the, the Torah law, she should have been outside of the town. And staying out there, she should not have come in. But she heard stories about this, this one that could be possibly the one that changes everything, the one that, that sets her free, the one that heals her. So desperate things call for desperate measures, and she takes the risk to come into the town to try and find this Jesus and get in front of them. 
And it says in Mark chapter 5 and verse 28, listen to this. For she thought, if I just touch his garments, I will get well. Who do you think caused her to think that thought? Ruach. The Spirit of God can move on even the unbelievers and create in them the ability to think thoughts that they would not normally have thought of. But this woman thought, she had this inspiration, this thought. It just wasn't hers. I believe it was God inspiring her to go meet Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and to be healed that day. So it actually drew her into an encounter with Jesus. In verse 33 in Mark chapter 5, but the woman, fearing and trembling, aware of what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. You know, when he was looking for the power has gone out of me. Who was this? And he looks at her and she came forward, admits to it and says, "This, it was me. It was me. I touched the hem of your garment. And so then out of that experience, Jesus, and he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. There's a word for you today. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Right now, in Jesus' name, we release Holy Spirit over you, wherever you are. What's going on in your life is a storm, but there is a rushing tide called Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kadesh of God, that will come and remove it from your life today. Amen. Mm -hmm. Word spreads for the goodness of his son. So, you know, these miracles and signs and wonders that Jesus was doing, they spread. People talked. When good news happens, people talk. So the good news of the gospel is the stories of Jesus and the healings of Jesus, the signs and wonders and the miracles that follow us who believe. So if you jump forward a chapter and go into Mark chapter 6, verse 56, the very last verse of that chapter Wherever he entered villages, that's Jesus, or cities or countryside, they were laying the sick in the marketplaces and imploring him that they might just touch the fringe of his cloak. And as many as touched it were being cured. Come on. <laughs> so the testimony of one woman who got radically healed of a 12-year issue of blood that word spread all around the countryside. They started bringing the sick and other people because this man carries something. He is the son of God. And they came expectant because faith through the stories they had heard had been built up in them. And they wanted to come meet this Jesus. All they wanted to do, they knew this is the faith element that gets stirred up by telling stories of the goodness of God and the miracles that he does. It creates a faith level in people that when they come to encounter Jesus, they're already expectant. They have got something going on in their life that they need help with. And they come with that expectancy that the Lord will meet them wherever they are, whatever their need is, that the Lord God Almighty will actually come, restore, and renew them by his touch. Amen. Holy Spirit works in our lives to bring the encounter with the Savior. He is the Holy Spirit. He is the one that the Bible says is the one that will convict of sin and bring people in. So when the eyes of people today are blocked, when their ears are blocked, Holy Spirit overrides that and comes in and removes any blockage because he's hunting down and he is after someone that doesn't know God, doesn't know Jesus, and calling them uh, through his power to awaken and to come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. John 15 and verse 26. This is where it gets really, uh, I love this part, because this is after Jesus, and Jesus is telling his disciples, this is what's going to happen. So get ready. And so he's saying them in, in verse 26, when the helper comes, who's the helper? Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. He's the helper whom I will send to you from the Father. That is the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father. He will test about, testify about me. So what's the job of the Holy Spirit? To testify about the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. To bring glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to the Father. 
His sole purpose, this Holy Ghost, this Holy Spirit, is upon us and in us uh, to actually be used of the Lord, to be holy as he is holy, to be an instrument, a kadosh, set aside for service and, and pleasure of the Lord. Okay? John 16 and verse 7, this takes a little bit further. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage do you get, let those words ring, ring, ring into your spirit. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit will not come. But if I go, I will send him to you. And he, referring to the Holy Spirit, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. So what's the job of the Holy Spirit? To convict the world of judgment and righteousness and their, their sin. Oh, I thought that was our job. No, our job is to be in tune with the Holy Spirit and allow him to operate and work through us to go out and do the signs, wonders, and miracles that Jesus Christ asked of us. <laughs> it's our call. It's our duty. It's what is required of us. Now, if you go to John 16 and verse 13, let's take this a little bit further. This is the amazing gift that has been bestowed upon you through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. He did not need to give us this Holy Spirit. But thank God he did, because we are blessed today because of it. And if we get to know, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. Verse 13, John 16. But when he, the spirit of truth, breath, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth, and he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. Let's break that verse down. There's several categories in this verse, and you need to be aware of them because as a believer in Jesus Christ, you need to know the operation and what's, what's running through your veins and in your spirit is the Holy Spirit, who what? Well, A, he's referred to as he. It doesn't say you know, Holy Spirit per se, but he refers to he. That's a personality. You can't be a, you know, a, a nothing. He is a personality. He is part of the Trinity. He is part of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The three working together in oneness, in unity. And because of that, we're blessed to have that same unity linked into us. Our spirit is connected to the spirit of the living God, and all of it all mishmashes together perfectly in God's design. Amen. The second thing is the spirit of truth. He is the spirit of truth. His name is the Holy Spirit or ghost. You know, it's referred to as he, but that is the same as a Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. He is in us, full of the truth. The third thing is he is to be your guide, bringing you into all truth. That's the job of the Holy Spirit within us is to speak to us, to reveal to us, and to bring truth to us. What he hears in the throne room comes down the line to us, to you and me. He's connected to the Father and Son and does not go it alone. He's not interested in his own initiative. He's only operating from what he knows, and from what he hears, spoken of by his Father and Jesus in the throne room, and then he's the messenger. He comes with the message of good hope. He comes with the message of uh, word of knowledge. He comes with the message of healing. He comes with divine inspiration. You name it, Holy Spirit is operating and working on behalf of the Father through us for others. Amen. So he's on you for you. He's in you for you, but he's on you and can come upon you, but he is around you for others as well. Amen. And so the next part is he hears. So I'm saying there, well, he hears what? Like I've said already, he's hearing what has been spoken about in the throne room, in the heavenly of heavenly, the holy of holies, where everything takes place, where everything gets initiated. 
that's where he is. And he is bringing us this revelation on a daily, if not minute by minute, uh, he has got the equipping and he can come to equip us to actually stir us up for greater works. So the next one is, for he will speak. So if he's speaking, like I said earlier, then if he's got the ability to speak, well, he's obviously got the ability to listen. So I'm telling you today that this Holy Spirit gift that's been given to us has been given to us. It's a blessing. It is a treasure, and you should go sell everything you have to actually to gather it. You know, like you're know, finding the the pearl of great price in the field. You go sell all you have. So I want that field because I know what's in there. I know that treasure, and that's what my heart desires. And so, but we've been given this as a free gift. The minute we said yes to Jesus Christ to be our Lord, to be our Savior, and to be our Master, you got that gift. The gift of the Holy Spirit was given to you. Why? Because Jesus said he would. When he would go to the Father, he would send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit would come and dwell inside of us, you and me. And then the last one, he will disclose to you what is to come. So get excited, folks. We get the inside information. We get the hot stuff coming straight off the you know, off the, the, the words of the Lord. He hears it. Holy Spirit comes and he, he tells us. He lets us know. He leads us. He speaks with that, that internal voice. And, uh, and, and just makes us aware. That's why when you walk into a meeting and you, you, you sense the presence of the, of the Lord, and then things begin to drop in your spirit. Someone's here who's not well. They've got a left leg that's, that's, that's twisted, got broken in a car accident years ago, is not right. And the Lord says, today, I've made you aware of this. Today, Holy Spirit, this is information from the throne room because the Father is intentional about healing that guy's leg. Amen? So the gifts come through us because of the interaction between the Holy Spirit and the throne room, but the Holy Spirit desires not just to be a thing. He is a personality. He is a person. He is a friend of the Lord. He is your friend. And the two-way relationship should be you in connection. His name is holy. Get to know his name. Call him by his name. Talk to him. And allow that relationship to build, because when a relationship is built, trust comes in in the back of it, and trust brings that so much more into a relationship, and he releases so much more. When he knows he can trust you, he will give you more. And so the Father has given us a wild, wild gift, and most of us don't realize it, but it is there for us. It's there to operate through us and to bless others because of the power of God that can flow through us because of our connection with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in you. You cannot lose. Is in you, is upon you, and is around you. So there's three ways that the Holy Spirit operates. He's in you, he's upon you, and he's around you. So when he's around you, you get to do things with the Holy Spirit because that Holy Spirit that's around you is around whoever the Lord and the Holy Spirit is leading you to come across. And so you get to encounter people, and on a daily basis you get to encounter people because the Holy Spirit has directed your pathway to be there such and such a place, such and such a time. There is no coincidences in the kingdom of God. God is at work because he loves everyone that doesn't know him yet. And you are an instrument, a powerhouse of the Lord God Almighty where the Holy Spirit flows through you and you get to impact people's lives with the love of a father. Amen. Yo, so in John 10, uh, verse 10, it says, uh, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. So the ghost of the other sort, the minions of the devil, have one goal in life. Well, they're three. They want to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. That is 
a nonsense. You do not want to be around any of that that wants to steal, kill, and destroy your life that's in you. But the Lord comes and the Lord blesses you as a believer with the power of the Holy Ghost, that same power that spoke and creation was formed, that same power that rose his son out of the tomb, out of the death, and raised him up to go to be with the Father in heaven. Such power like a mighty rushing tide. It cannot be stopped. It's unquenchable. It is Holy Ghost. It is Holy Spirit. And is in you. Do you realize it? Do you know it? I'm going to pray for you right now. And if you're not really aware of what is going on in your life, as far as the Holy Spirit goes, then pray with me. Put your hands on your chest right now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I bless you with the power of the Holy Spirit. I bless you with your eyes to be opened, your ears to be uh, awakened to the voice of the Holy Spirit that he has been gifted to you, that you get to love Holy Spirit much as he loves you. He wants to interact with you, and I just bless you today in that name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that you get to interact much more deeper with the Holy Spirit, that you realize he's just not a name of something who's the third part of a trinity, but he is every bit as much as the trinity as the Father and the Son, because all are linked. All function differently, but all are linked. All are part of it. And when Jesus said, when I come... I come and I give you that gift. Let's, let's just look at that. John 17. In verse 14, he will glorify me, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. There's that giving, because it's all authority, all power is his. So he gives what he knows is his to give from the Father. Verse 15, all things that are at the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. There is an interaction, a Holy Ghost interaction that goes on between the three and the fourth person, us, who get the benefits of Holy Ghost inside of us, awakening us, stirring us up to go and do the greater works of the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to get to know this Lord and to get to know this Holy Spirit. It's so much bigger, so much wider than you can imagine. And he loves to talk. All we need to do is stop long enough to listen. So while I was waiting on the Lord for this morning, uh, I got two things that I felt the Lord was bringing to my attention. One is a someone that's actually having a blood transfusion because of a, a type of blood that's not helping, not developing, and not, not staying well within their system. And the Lord, I just felt the Lord was coming today to actually come upon you and where they're, they're, the doctors in the medical profession, bless the Lord for them, but where they can't go is to the knowledge of what the Lord and the Holy Spirit can do when he comes in, like Charles Wesley said, and, and dissects and, and cuts and gets rid of the part that's damaged. So I believe that, that if you're hearing this, the Lord's saying to you today that the God Almighty, your Savior, is coming to wash through and cleanse through your blood supply and to make it wholesome again, make it that it will work well within your body. And that what they're trying to do is they're trying to help by the Holy Spirit God can do so much more, so much quicker. So I bless you if you hear that today, that you receive it, that you believe it, that God is at work for you. He has not left you behind. He has not walked by you. He sees you and he knows about your blood condition and he is coming to heal and restore right now in Jesus' name. The second one was someone has been bound in a coma. You've been put into a medically induced coma. And I believe it's a man. And if, if a family member is hearing this, or and I think, well, I know so-and-so, they've got this condition. They're in an induced coma through something that's gone wrong in their life, and they're not uh, being able to be brought back out of it again in an ordinary me method. 
And I believe that the Lord again is speaking to you, man, and saying that the Lord God Almighty is coming with a visitation to you where he is going to come upon you and is going to restore you. He is going to cause you to be spiritually awakened like Saul on the road to Damascus. There will be an encounter where the spirit of the living God drops into the room where you are in the hospital and comes upon you and restores you, and you're going to confound the medical science people because it will, to their eyes, it will be like an impossibility. This can never happen. It should never happen. But when the Lord God Almighty and the Spirit of the living God falls upon you in your condition, watch out because you're about to get restored. And so I bless you with that right now in Jesus' name, that if you've got a blood condition that's not well and you've got a coma induced upon you, that they're saying that there's no hope really and that words are being spoken over your life, your life's not over because God has said it's not. And I speak it over you today that life will flow not only in your blood, but also come upon you to awaken you out of the coma that you've been trapped into. And so I just bless everybody that's hearing this word, the word of the Lord this morning. When the spirit of our God moves, that spirit that dwells inside of you, get ready, get ready, because things shift, things change. And so I just bless you with that. Get to know Holy Ghost. Get to know the Holy Spirit. He is a friend, and he is here with a purpose. He is here to help us walk into that holy and that righteous living before the Lord God Almighty. He is the greatest friend you can ever have. He will never let you down, and he will only speak truth to you because truth can only come from the source that the Holy Spirit draws from. <laughs> and that is our God, the Almighty One. Mm -hmm. So we bless you today in the name of, of Jesus, and we thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching.